Hello and welcome to Coach's Decision, a weekly talk show that covers sports from the Bay Area and, well, just the Bay Area today because it's such an exciting day here in the Bay. We have live streaming on the official KSCO Mega Screen, the Warriors playing the Memphis Grizzlies. Warriors currently up 32-20, to 20, trying to chase 73. My name is Thomas Todd. I'll be your host this evening. Joining me in the studio today, he drinks and he knows things. It's Joaquin Nagel. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. You I'm don't know what that's from, do you? No, I do not. It's from the new Game of Thrones trailer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Is it a, Tyrion it's Lannister? It's a Tyrion line. That's, his, uh, that's great. Uh, someone dropped that at trivia last night because that's all we do. Do we drink and we know things <laughs> at trivia? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, I, I would say I'm... I, I maybe have one other skill. You climb walls, I which, climb, you, I which climb would rocks. do you well in, in Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty solid in the Game of Thrones verse of drinking, knowing things, and being able to climb things. Hopefully I don't get pushed out a window by a brother doing something with his sister. You could get all the way to Castle Black. I know you could. <laughs> All right, so on today's show, we're going to cover those Warriors. We're going to cover the end of the NBA season, which means previewing the playoffs, tying up some loose ends of what's going on. Uh, Steph Curry hitting even more threes. He's at 398. He's got six in this game, needs two to hit 400. We're also going to talk about George Carl and Randy Whitman losing their jobs. And we'll check in a little Champions League update from Joaquin Nagel. Yeah. Uh, also, coming down the pipeline, apparently Sam Mitchell is looking to lose his job as well. He's been looking at that for a long time, and I think it's uh, his GM finally saw the Kobe 81-point tape <laughs> that they've been playing all day on NBA TV. And they're like, oh, wait, he's responsible for that. That was him? Maybe maybe he shouldn't be the head coach of our young, promising basketball team. Goes on a Wikipedia deep dive and starts realizing that he wants body slammed a player in a, in a locker room. Watches all the story time with Jalen Rose videos about <laughs> Sam Mitchell. <laughs> so good. All right, before we get into some stories, we will tell you we are presented by SeatGeek. Have you ever been frustrated buying tickets online? I know everyone who tried to go to this Warriors game and everyone who's trying to see Kobe's last game are all paying through the nose to get to the game, but they didn't have to quite pay as much. They could have gone to SeatGeek. They could have seen the red means bad. The green means you're getting a good deal. They could have found the best deal to go to these two fantastic games. And then coming up, not for the Lakers, but for the Warriors, some playoff games. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there listening, SeatGeek is a wonderful app. We, we will give you $20 of rebate if you use our offer code SFG20. So download the app, look for a good deal, go to a playoff game in your region. I'm sorry if you live in Milwaukee or uh, what are some other non-playoff cities? Uh, well, actually, I was Denver, Denver, oh Utah. Boy. Oh, give me two. Uh, Sacramento. Oh, they can, they can migrate to, to Oakland, though. Phoenix going fishing. Oh, man, that whole state, it, <laughs> no good. Uh, so if you live somewhere where there will be games played, where there are concerts, SeatGeek is your way to go. Once again, SFG20 is our promo code. You'll get a $20 rebate after your first ticket purchase. All right, Joaquin, let's jump right into it. Okay. The Warriors seem to be easing their way into a 73rd win this season. 73rd win. This was one a 72 and 10. That was one of Bill Simmons's 10 records I'll never see broken in my lifetime in his book of basketball. Right. What were some of the other uh, 100 point game? I imagine. Uh, I think 11 championships. The total turnovers from the guy in the ABA who had like 430 <laughs> in a season. Well, James Harden's going to give it a whirl. Hey, the chase for 400 was on this year. Harden and Curry. Oh man. That's so good. Um, what what are the implications of this? Because it seems every 20 or so years a team really pops off like this. But it's not going to happen more often now that we're in a modern age of basketball. Is it going to happen less often? I, I don't think there's any. There's going to be a, a particular particular pattern to what sort of teams uh, achieve this level of greatness. I think um, for the most part, continuity is a huge factor. I think that the last two teams that had such a great record, if you look at the 96, 95, 96 Bulls, uh, they had continuity from the previous year's playoffs and added one big piece in Rodman. And then the same thing happened with the Celtics, where the 86 Celtics were on the before them the last great, great team that like, people love to talk about. And they had continuity from a team that had experience winning together, and then they added a big piece in Bill Walton. Hmm, interesting. So I think, I think continuity is... Um, really important when it comes to achieving to so, this degree in the regular season. So the Bulls don't have anything to hang their heads about. They played in an era where there wasn't a lot of good uh, health uh, matters. There wasn't a lot of good health coaching. There wasn't a lot of good travel. 
the Warriors kind of have it a little bit made for themselves di- in a different era. I think, I think, and uh, this is this goes against pretty much what most people say about defense was harder back then and uh, things were more physical. Players didn't play as hard. Right. I think uh, and backups defense, weren't as good. We talked about yeah, that last yeah, week. Depth and also defense wasn't. People weren't playing as hard in the first half. And I think there's just a little bit less wear on on players' bodies. If you look at minutes per game played by the best players, it's been on a steady decline. And I don't think that's because people are worse and not as physically gifted and not as well-trained. Well, one of the reasons is because they've become more valuable assets as contracts have gone up and the league's collectively bargaining for more and more money, that the players are more valuable. You know, LeBron goes down, Mm -hmm. Cleveland's sunk. Well, I also think that, uh, and to some extent, front offices are better about scheming for the postseason and valuing postseason success higher than in the past. Um, And with with regards to that, they're resting players so that the players can have a healthy postseason. What about an argument I saw um, somewhere, I think it was on Around the Horn or one of those ESPN shows, that... Chicago didn't have to log as many travel miles as oh, the Warriors right. did because they're you know more centrally located. O'Hare is the most trafficked airport uh, as far as stopovers. I think them in Atlanta in the country. So having to go coast to coast on long six, seven, eight game road trips. Mm, people have often said that if this record was going to be broken, it would be by an East Coast team, a team that could potentially bus or train or travel lighter and have fewer extended road trips. I mean, the Warriors almost became the first team to go seven and zero on a seven a road trip of seven games or more, going six and one, winning the first six games of that road trip until they lost Milwaukee. their first game of the season yeah, to Milwaukee. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's kind so of like the, the, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I do think the travel plays into effect, but as we're seeing, this team has a potential to set the record from the West Coast at home. At home. Yeah, the Seattle Mariners in baseball have to travel ridiculously more than every other team because even the California teams get to play each other, and Seattle has to even roam down into California to play teams in its division, and it does probably have an effect on overall health, overall just well-being. They probably have to rest their players more, um, but the Warriors haven't been resting, and that's a thing that we need to talk about because will the lack of rest and the intensity of these last two weeks affect their postseason play? I honestly don't think so. Okay. How, the many, reason, how many long postseasons does it take for a team to start to burn out? Because I think, that has to exist, right? Yeah. From just thinking back, um, I'm probably around year four for extended postseason runs is where things have a lot of effects on teams. Uh, I can't recall the last time a team had a four-peat. I mean, it hurt, but LeBron had made the finals, what, five straight times? Uh, he has made the finals. That Well, that was part of the what was so astounding about those Miami teams is they've made the titles, the the finals four straight times, and they were the first team to do that since the 1980s Celtics. And in year five, LeBron had to take a two-week vacation in the middle of the season. Exactly. Because and, he was burnt. And now people are talking about le decline, or he's, but <laughs> it's not really le decline. That's it's not just, fair. It's really, he's had another amazing season. It's just that he's clearly not been able to expend expend the amount of effort that he used to on the defensive end. Well, and why should he? He's on the top seed in the Eastern Conference. He has a fairly clear path to the finals. He's trying to get Mojo with his other two superstars. Yeah. Um, I, well, he's trying to unfollow the Cavaliers. <laughs> he's trying to play that off like it's not a big thing. I'll, P.S. It's not a big thing. <laughs> they just have to play so differently. When you have the three superstars and then a bunch of scrubs... Not scrubs, but you know, ro- NBA rotation. I think that's players. unfair. I think the Cavs are spent or have spent pretty much the most money of any team in the league. Yeah, but I'm not talking about paid versus overpaid. The Warriors move the ball around. They use interchangeable pieces to do interchangeable things. When the Cavs win, it's because LeBron goes to the hoop, Kyrie makes his outside shot, and Kevin Love looks involved. Or because Jr. hits nine threes right. in a game. I guess that's a good point. Or Tristan Thompson get, grabs every offensive rebound, and at the end of the at the end of games when people say, oh, it's coming down to the last four possessions, the Cavs get all four of the possessions. What do you think? And then also then they're going out and signing Channing Fry to allow themselves to have that stretch five look to their offense. I really think that uh, this Cavs team has a lot of assets. Just the, the main difference between how they constructed their team and how the Warriors constructed their team is the Warriors emphasized passing, passing and uh and sort of like-sized players who could switch on Which defense. Which is what Verajal said when he came over. He said, man, you guys really know how to pass. Right. And uh, even when Kerr first came in as the head coach, he had a big emphasis on fundamental skills for their whole first training camp, which 
you know, seemed remedial to a lot of the players, but it really reflected itself on how they played. And, you know, their turnovers per game has was started really high as when Kerr first started coaching and has steadily declined. Well, when you bring in a guy like Barbosa, who's used to that, he's used to the transition passing and the speed and the look. They just found a profile of player that they like. Mm-hmm. And actually, the Verajao signing, that's a pl- style of player they don't really use. I yeah, mean, that's more, that was, seemed more like a stop ga- a stopgap while Azili was injured mm-hmm. more than anything. Well, and hopefully he'll get his ring. Good for Verajao. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about the Cavs starting Tristan Thompson at center? They said they were gonna, they're going to do that in the playoffs. I think it's the right look. I think um, that's his that's his destiny. They gave him the big contract last summer, which is essentially promising him to be a starter. And he can't start at the four because Kevin Love is a player they have to integrate. But I think Tristan at the five, he can set a screen, he can grab rebounds, he can roll to the basket. He can finish with either hand because he doesn't know if he's right-handed or left-handed. <laughs> do do we do any of us even know at the do, end of the day? At, at the end of the day, uh, JJ Redick was trying to convince DeAndre Jordan to shoot free throws with the other hand on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue in cheek, mind you, but um, still, I think it's the right move to start Tristan Thompson at the five. I mean, maybe it's the right move to then start LeBron at the four and bring Kevin Love off the bench like he's Andre Iguodala. Hmm. If they could do, if they could then find three wing players to put around LeBron and Tristan Thompson, because LeBron's lack of an outside shot over the past couple of seasons has hurt his ability to play off the ball. They're not going to bring Kevin Love. Of course off the they're bench. not. No, I'm, uh, that's not going to happen. I'm just saying sure maybe. That's not what you were implying. No, 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 no. Just so we don't not get any all. phone calls. Though the only phone call we've gotten recently is because we bagged on the Sharks and hockey in general. Uh oh. <laughs> we got a call about that. Fantastic. Well, the playoffs are starting, right? Keep calling. Do we know what's happening? No, keep calling. Okay. Um, the Warriors' chase for history was important. Part of it was defeating the Spurs in San Antonio and ending their home win streak and nixing their chance for an undefeated season at home. Mm -hmm. Now, getting yourself in the record books is one thing. Removing someone else from the history books, that's amazing. That's amazing. It would have been been, uh, hard for people to to have hot takes as the Spurs. Or maybe the the takes would be too hot if the Spurs (laughs) were undefeated at home and the Warriors set the wins record. Skip Bayless might have finally exploded. I think his hair would have caught on fire in the whole first take Like Michael Jackson in a Pepsi commercial in the 80s. All right, Kobe's last game is the other co-headliner tonight. We're not watching it, but obviously we're going to get back to our marital beds, curl (laughs) up, and we're going to watch some Kobe highlights one more time. Mm -hmm. How many minutes does he play in this game? All of the minutes. All of, <laughs> all of the minutes. Well, he's had plenty of time to rest after this. He he's plays, what do you think, 40? Probably yeah, 40 minutes. Full 40. Rests four minutes at the start of the second and at the start of the fourth. How many shots does he take? I 40? <laughs> I really hope, I really hope with my heart of hearts, he goes eight for 24. Eight, oh, I get it. <laughs> His two numbers. Well, they're both going to be on the floor tonight, eight and 24. I saw some pictures of the Lakers floor. Um, the Warriors game is more important, though. Oh, yes. Overall. Um, for history, of course. But are we asking, is this Lakers team potentially winning its, what, like 18th game, 19th game? Is that important in the scope of history? No, it's like an experiential thing for all the uh, citizens of the nation of Kobe Stan. <laughs> but it's not really, uh, it doesn't have any ongoing effect. What's the capital of Kobe Stan? Um, I don't know. Fro- Frobill? <laughs> <laughs> Froville. Do you think the members of Kobe Stan... Andwan, Andwan, maybe? <laughs> Andwan. <laughs> Do you think the the citizens prefer Froby or Mamba Kobe? Uh, I think everyone likes Mamba Kobe. Really? Only because it spawned so many other Mambas. It started <laughs> to become like a Kill Bill movie. Well, th- Yeah, I think Mamba <laughs> Kobe came straight out of Kill Bill. I yeah. think that's the most unoriginal and one of the lamest sports nicknames in history. Well, when your name is already like a type of beef... <laughs> like you don't need a nickname, and well, no one even uses his last name ever. So yeah, um, people could call him Jelly Bean or Bean. Uh, Kobe Bean Bryant. Well, because that was his dad, right? Yeah. Jelly Bean. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I liked Froby the. Froby. <laughs> well, the take Kobe from the first three P and the high flying cross you over in your face Kobe without the stupid lower jaw jet. Yeah. I no can't, one liked the jet. No, no, no one can handle that. It's like one of the lame. It's, it's the only lamer stank face is Steph's. 
You don't like Steph's stank face? Do you like Steph's stank face? I like, I like the shimmy. I'm in, His I'm eyes in are on too the sh- pretty for the stank face. He yeah. has such pretty eyes. It's too piercing of an eye, of, <laughs> of a look for a stank face. I can see God in his eyes, Joaquin. I'm, I'm with the shimmy and the, the chest pounding and the pointing to the sky. I, I like do, all that. I don't know what the running the fingers across the arm. Three times, three, it's, loading a gun. They do. Yeah, there's no real. I mean, it. It evokes three pointers. Whenever I'm doing it in public, it looks like I'm doing a Sikh Heil and I just get really uncomfortable. Yeah, you gotta be very aware of what arm you raise up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a motion that this is three fingers yeah, and look, not. You, you really emphasize, look, three fingers down, I'm putting them on my arm now and I'm gonna raise it yeah. and I'm never gonna get to the just the one arm up so salute. When you have to preface the dance, it's not really, <laughs> it's not fun when you have to explain it before you do it. I think that's just your whiteness shining through, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> it always comes up. The cream always rises to the top, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> what are your favorite Kobe memories? You know, we have the 81 point game. We have what? What else do we have from Kobe that we're gonna remember when we're 50, 60, 70 years old? What are we gonna say we saw Kobe Bryant do? Uh, we're gonna say we saw him cross over, drive the lane, and throw a lob to Shaq against Portland in Game Seven. What a great moment that was! And what was that? The 2000 NBA fi- uh, Western Conference Finals. Poor Rashid. Poor Sheed. He got he got him back. He did get him back. He played with the Pistons. That's true. Um, we're gonna remember the. 80, I actually remember where I was for the eighty-one point where game. Where were you? I was on a date. Oh, how old and, were you? Uh, two thousand. I was twenty. Okay. And so bad date. It was a bad date. It had the potential to be a decent date, <laughs> except the only TV in the restaurant was on the wall behind her, like mm-hmm. uh, maybe twenty feet back kind of up in the corner, and it was really hard to maintain eye contact when I realized Kobe had made maybe 10 straight jumpers in the third quarter. And it, I felt like I was looking over her left shoulder right at the television the whole time. Okay, well, we'll keep her name out of it to protect the Yeah, innocent. we didn't We didn't go on a second date. Oh, no. No. Do you remember what restaurant you were at? I remember the city. No, I. it was like an Italian, like a pizza-style table service restaurant in okay. Claremont. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. You were in college. Mm-hmm. I forgot you didn't stay here for college. That's true. Um, unfortunately, a lot of my Kobe memories are going to be off the court. Okay. You know, there was the, the accusations in the court case. Um, I'm going to remember Shaq asking him how his butt tastes <laughs> because that was... Is a, that really a Kobe memory? It is for me oh, okay. because Shaq was so effervescent and so mm-hmm. much fun and such a different style of player that it was really hard to love both. That's true. So you kind of had to pick a lane. It was so much easier well, to ride with Shaq. That was, Shaq wasn't still re- That was right after Shaq finished being relevant. Shaq wasn't relevant really as a player after 07 or 08, right? right? So that was really the end of that. That was the 2008 finals after Boston won. After that, I'm just rooting for Kobe to not make the playoffs because it's funny. But I feel bad now because his part of his legacy is how many times he made the playoffs, how many championships he won. How he tore his Achilles in an effort to make the playoffs. Yeah, that was sad. See, it's all sad in retrospect, but at the time I'm giggling. I don't know. Uh, I remember Kobe taking over the final of the 2008 Olympics against Spain. That he did. That's oh, no. absolutely true. They needed mm. someone to be the guy. And he was the guy. Mm. Spain was making a really big push, and he was the guy for the Redeem team. That's a big, that's a, a lasting Kobe memory for me for right, sure i'm gonna have to youtube some of that because i did watch that but i i the memories I are mean, fading it was the middle of the night we were waking up at like four in the morning to watch games in china i was on the east coast so it was it was actually like 7 a.m so okay. it was perfect i was getting up and my grandma's making me breakfast and i'm watching the redeemed it was perfect oh, that sounds wonderful all right well we're gonna get to our all nba teams in a second tori do you have something to contribute i did have something what, what do you got tori uh the latest kobe commercial the conductor is actually Kobe in an arena, and it's just slowly a giant choir coming up of different fans that he has slighted in the past, screaming about how much they hate Kobe. Different franchises like Sacramento, Spain, Spain, Portland. I'm adding this to my YouTube queue as yeah. we speak. Um, also, the commercial with Michael B. Jordan. Oh, I haven't seen that one <laughs> okay. yet. Okay. They couldn't get Michael A. Jordan because he's busy and he's locked under contract with 17 different companies. Mr. Jeffrey, though? Michael Jeffrey Mike, Jordan. Sorry, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I could A Jordan because Michael B Jordan is just the B side <laughs> of He's regular Michael side. Jordan. He's the B team in the B team. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I've been called the B team before. It's not good. It, was it by your father because you have the same name? No. Well, it was, here's uh, my son, the B team. It was I once dated a girl and both of us had had huge crushes on these other two people that were also dating. So they, the two people that weren't us referred to us as the B team. 
I am still friends with these people. I really think that was a strong move by those people. That is I, the, I congratulate them on that nicknaming. Power That's move. the most I've ever been upset while dying laughing because it was <laughs> so funny that they came up with that, but so incredibly insulting. I have not recovered, and I will once again remove the names to protect the innocent. I will not remove the names of Fanatics.com and FansEdge.com, our second sponsors tonight. They are a sports merchandise company. Get all of your playoff gear Gear up for Warriors, Sharks, Giants, A's, or whatever your local market may be. Uh, these websites offer 20, 30, even 40% off retail price. What you can do for us, though, is you can go to coachesdecisionksco.com and click through. Every article, every blog we post has a link to both of those sites. If you follow through there, they will send us some of your hard-earned cash that you are spending on the already discounted merchandise. So it's a great deal for you. It's a great deal for us. Once again, fanatics.com and fansedge.com. But click through our site, coachesdecisionksco.com. And we're coming back. And, Tori, I actually want to – I'm going to throw this on you. Arco Arena – will no longer host the Sacramento Kings. You grew up across the street, pretty much, as much as you can grow up across the street from something in Sacramento, from Arco Arena. What will you remember from Arco? Oh, God. Kobe? Oh, you, you have so notes. You, I, you, I, know I know you brought notes. I wrote notes. I said, Tori, just tell us some of your memories, and she becomes half a page of notes. Like, look what I wrote down. So when I moved to Sacramento, it was... I moved to Natomas. That's where Arco is. Like, when I went to high school... Because nothing's in the city it says it's in, ever. Yeah. Well, Natomas is in Sacramento. It's yeah. literally across the river from downtown. Okay. But Arco Arena is in Natomas. But when I moved there, Arco was surrounded by just fields and fields of farming. There was nothing out there. And by the time I got to high school, there was development. The Kings were starting to get good. And uh, it was the only thing that we really had. We didn't have other sports teams. The River Cats weren't really a thing yet. Uh, and Wait, every... hold on. Are they a thing now? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right, really, sorry. really field but is really nice. It is. It's a really, really nice field. It's better than going to the Sacramento. Coliseum. Where is it? It's in West Sacramento, West which West is Sacramento. In, isn't even in the same county. Okay. Oh, that's also closer to us. We're, we're learning geography of, of the Central Valley here. No, the River Cats, the stadium is so much nicer than Oakland's. Yeah. All right. So. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Oh, right? it's fine. But the Kings were... 98 to 2006, like that was me in middle school, high school, the beginnings of college. Uh, when I was doing theater, our spring musical would always overlap with Western Conference championships. Chris Webber denying his old friendships with the Fab Five. Mm -hmm. A glorious era. Uh, Doug Christie getting elbowed in the face by Kobe Bryant and having a foul called on him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 2002, never forget. We haven't. Uh, I had to explain to someone the other the other week about how horribly that that playoff series was called. They didn't they didn't remember, and I was like, oh, you'll remember when I tell you. Kings fans will always be salty, but uh, the championship games would always fall during the spring musical. We would literally come out at intermission and tell all the dads what the score was of the game because Those are it was good dads. such a thing. Those are not the kind of dad I plan on being. Those dads were at the spring musical? Yeah, for their Amazing kids. Amazing dads. Wait, we had a really good theater department. We had a really good theater department. Pre-iPhone, pre-iPad, pre-things just buzzing in your pocket telling you what's happening. But Arco is like, it's this crap arena. It seats like 17,000 people, but the fans are loud. They are dedicated. They will break out their cowbells after Shaq slights you. Who's the most famous player you saw play there? Uh, I saw the whole Fab Five. Oh, you mean I'm I'm talking about non kings. Oh. And the Fab Five, those are the Michigan guys from the early nineties. That's a different that's Probably a different Blake subject. Griffin. Blake Griffin. Ooh. I won opening night this year. It was that's Kings true. Clippers. I saw Hakeem Olajuwon in about nineteen ninety six. At Sleep Train? Uh at Arco. Arco. It will never be Sleep Train. <laughs> never be Sleep Train. At Arco, I remember I purchased a Tyus Edney jersey because I'd seen him at UCLA and still liked college better than pros. But Hakeem Olajuwon, Charles Barkley was in that game. Matt Maloney hit a couple of threes because I liked random white guys who shot threes. I mean, Charles Barkley probably shot a couple of threes. He has the worst <laughs> percentage ever of anyone who's ever attempted at he, least 2,000 threes. He didn't cross either three-point line that entire <laughs> game. He was at that stage of his career. It, he's, he was Sheed before Sheed was Sheed, is oh. what you're saying. He'd play himself into shape, and even then. Sometimes. Okay. Well, Tori, I have another memory of Arc Arena. I saw Billy Joel there. I uh, saw Incubus with my mom at Arco Arena. Wow. Her her choice to go there. Happy birthday, Mom. To go see Incubus? <laughs> yeah. Man. She really liked Hoobastank. Oh. 
The and the reason is you. I'm just gonna <laughs> mute you right now because we're done with all Huba Stank related talk on this show. Okay, we're gonna pick it back up with some hardcore analysis. Joaquin has okay his all NBA all teams. NBA we touched teams. on these a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, but races were still to be made. Decisions still had to be made, and they have to be submitted pre playoffs. So they it's do. time. It is time for your all NBA team. And I'm gonna make a fake one I of mean, mine. With no pen in my hand, but I'm just going to reject some of your players and insert some of my own. I mean, imagine if okay. I actually had a ballot. Here, here how, we go. How you do have a ballot. Right here. Yes. Right in front of me. Um, first, first of team. all, I, I'm going to actually, uh, first team, Steph, far and away, this, has to be on the first team. Of course. The MVP. Um, the MVP. Because soon to be two-time. Um, the two forward spots, I have Kawhi Leonard, who I have at second in the MVP race, and LeBron, who I have as third in the MVP race. Okay. And then, um, I I hinted at this last time we spoke, but last time we spoke about it, I'm going all in. Draymond Green is my first team center. Wow. Because I just can't bring myself to put any of the other centers on the first team. Well, you don't have to put a center on anymore, do you? You do. It's no. It's not like the All Star voting. It's, oh, really? It has to be a center. Mm. Uh, have to be center eligible. You could choose AD, but he hasn't played in the past few weeks. He's what only, does center eligible mean? Um, listed at played a certain number of minutes at center throughout the season. You don't have to declare when you go in the game whether you're a center or a guard or not. I think it's positional analysis. Mm. Interesting. Anyways. Um, okay. So you got you got Dre in there. I got Draymond at the center, and then I I was struggling with the second guard spot, and it's because I'm struggling with who had a better season, Chris Paul or Chris Russell Paul Westbrook. or Wessel. It's Russell, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. You think so? I think so. Okay, so here here's what gave uh, what gave me pause. Okay, Westbrook has better raw numbers, right? He has a he has the second best PER in the league. He's 25, 10, and and eight. He got a triple double in 18 minutes the other night. Yeah, he had, 18 minutes. We so, haven't done anything on this show, and we've been on the air for 18 minutes. <laughs> but really, 23.5 points, 10.4 rebounds, 7.8, or sorry, 10.4 assists, 7.8 rebounds, and two steals on 45% shooting, 80% from the line. And the Thunder have won 55 games. Okay. That has to count for something, Chris, either positive or negative. Chris Paul, 20 point, 19.5 points, 10 assists, 4.2 rebounds, 2.1 steals. 46% from the field, 37% from deep, 89% from the line. That's a nice free throw percentage. And the Clippers have won 54 games. They've won 54 games with Blake Griffin missing a significant part of the season. And that's because Chris Paul has led a team of himself, DeAndre Jordan, J.J. Redick. And who, 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 and who? Jeff Green, Dylan, Jamal Crawford. Dylon, 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 and Dylon. He's led that team to 54 wins. That's amazing. So that, you, that's a contribution. It's really hard to take away from either guy's effort because the effort, they both play at 110% all the time. Mm-hmm. And they're both fantastic at that attribute of the game. And that's why you put someone like Draymond, someone like Kawhi on these lists because they have that willpower. I just think Russell's more skilled at this point. Russell Westbrook has Kevin Durant on his team. Mm-hmm. And so the the four guys we named to the team already, then you take Westbrook and CP3 and Kevin Durant. That's the top seven in the league. The if, Thunder have two of those top seven players, and they've won 55 games. So I think I know how we're both going to answer this question. Okay. If you have four bad news bears on your team, you have just four guys who look like me and you and Zach Lowe and other mm-hmm. media members just looking to have a run, and mm-hmm. we have to beat you know, an all-century team. Who yes. is our point guard, Russell Westbrook or Chris Paul? I Actually, you're going to say Westbrook. I'm going to say Chris Paul. I would say, okay, good. All this right. is I why you, you've Paul. swung me. I'm yeah. still going to put Westbrook on the first team. But. Okay, I I think I'm I think I'm talking myself into putting Chris Paul on the first team, which also means I'm talking myself to putting him higher on the MVP ballot than Westbrook. Okay, so second after LeBron, maybe. I would go Steph, Kawhi, LeBron. Okay, I forgot about Kawhi. And then yeah, sorry, Steph, Kawhi, LeBron. Chris and then Paul. Chris Paul and Russell. KD in some order. You're going to bump KD above? I have KD above Westbrook already. Why? I, but he's just behind Kawhi and LeBron. So there's no way there's no way for him to be on the first team. Because right. I'm sorry, you're behind okay. the other two forwards. Okay, well, that's fine. So our first team, well, I'm going to have to agree with you, I guess. Chris Paul and Steph in the backcourt, Kawhi, LeBron, and Draymond Green at center. Yes. 
second team. You so have to, they throw, have Westbrook to throw Westbrook and KD, both Thunder guys. So okay. Westbrook at one guard spot. Durant. Okay. Durant at one forward spot. I have Paul Millsap as the second forward. That's ridiculous. You think so? I don't. I've never seen that guy play in my life. Well, you don't watch any Hawks games. <laughs> that's Hawks not, and hockey. I don't watch either one of those things. <laughs> that's not Millsap's fault. <laughs> I mean, he's sort of a, a good Hawks. He's the Hawks' best player. Okay. And he's putting up career best numbers pretty much across the board. And he's extended his range to three point. And uh, the only other, I mean, uh. Paul George had a really hot start to the season, but he's fallen off. Absolutely. And Millsap's been consistent throughout the whole season. Well, Marcus Aldridge has come on of late, but I think Millsap has had a better overall season. Okay. Um, who is your other guard, and why would you do that to James Harden? Okay. <laughs> why so, did you do that to James Harden? He's on the 13th. How could you do that to James Harden? Because he doesn't play half of the game. I predicted him to win MVP this year. He's put up MVP-like offensive numbers. I predicted. Putting, I listened to my show he's that I did up, without you. He's putting up like 27, 7, and 7. He's having a great offensive year, but his team is not having a great year. They're vastly underperformed, and he only plays half the game. Are you putting Kyle Lowry on the second team? I'm going to I'm gonna put one of Kyle Lowry or Damian Lillard on the second team. That's hard because I've seen so much more of Lillard because mm-hmm. he's in the Western Conference and they play the Warriors a lot. I haven't seen too much Lowry, but I know his skill set. I know he's really, really talented. Yeah, and he also plays, uh, he play, puts in a lot of effort on defense, which okay. Willard, maybe he does put in a lot of effort, but he's just not There's exactly, no results ex- there. He's not exceedingly capable. There's no results there, no. Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll go down, let's just look at the numbers really quick. Okay. I mean, for Willard, we have 25 points, 7 assists, 4 boards on 40 Forty percent, thirty-seven, and eighty-nine. Okay. For Lowry, really similar. Twenty-one, six and a half assists, four point seven boards, so slightly more rebounds. I don't slightly care about less guard points. rebounds. Guard um, rebounds should just be thrown out. One and a half steals a game, forty-two, thirty-eight, eighty-one percent, and he has a he has a better PER, and I feel like, and he has enough more, uh, I. He's better enough on defense. He's got more juice on both ends of the yeah. floor. Okay. That and I think he gets credit for leading the Raptors to the two seed. So we're going Lowry. I'm going Lowry. And we need a second team center. We need a second Desigana team center. Desigana Jop. <laughs> uh, Bismack Biyombo. Oh, that's a good one. Hashim the Beat. Is he around? Uh, I saw him on the levee a couple of years ago. <laughs> I think he's playing in the D League. <laughs> I'm glad you qualified with that. He's playing in the D League and not he was on the levee, you know, looking for no. He was butts. he was walking all he was okay. just being seven foot three with the patch of hair. Like okay. it's hard to not know on, who that is. On top of a levee that stands, you know, thirty feet above the, the normal street level. Anyway, hey, the, you got to get from the hotel to the arena. That's a good point. That is a paradox. <laughs> <laughs> Local joke. <laughs> Local joke. All right, that was a, come on. Who's your it's, second it's team? The center? paradox hotel. Everyone. Who's the second team center? So, it's either Al Horford, you gonna make me DeAndre yell. Jordan, you're make me yell boogie, Carl Anthony Towns, or boogie. Yes, it's one of those four players. It's hard for me to believe that the Hawks have two players on that are second team All NBA no, when they you. didn't win tonight and they're in the four seed. You're not getting both of these guys through on this ballot. Okay, I'm not letting that happen. So okay. he's so he's Horford's gone. Horford's out. Towns. Ne- better luck next year. Okay, so now now we're between DeAndre and Boogie. Who can make their free throws? Who handle who dribbles? <laughs> Boogie, Boogie's a better player. Boogie's had a better statistical year. DeAndre's on a team that's meaningful. Tori. Boogie. How many games did Sacramento win last year? None. Three. Uh, probably about as many as the Lakers won this year. Yeah, and how many did they win this year? More. What, Twenty-seven ish. Yeah, they're climbing the standings. Uh, You're we looking at it right now. Here, we're going to scroll down. How many did they win? Well, 33. 33? Yeah. That's the best they've I done think in a long a, time. With a functional front office and coach, they would have had a sh- chance to make the playoffs in this year's Western Conference. Okay. I, I, I want Boogie. All right. Absolutely. I'm going Boogie. He handles the ball above the key. Mm-hmm. He facilitates on offense. Mm-hmm. He can play with Rajon Rondo. He's a splash cousin. Nobody wants to play with Rajon Rondo. 
That's true. Rajon Rondo's cousins on Thanksgiving don't want to play pickup with Rajon Rondo. Rick Carlisle certainly doesn't want Rajon Rondo <laughs> playing basketball with anyone he knows. Yeah, exactly. So we're going boogie. Okay. okay. So this third team guard pairing is awesome. Harden and Lillard. Bombs away. Yeah. Bombs over <laughs> basketball hoops. B O B. Um, and now it gets kind of itchy at the forward spot. I'm going Paul George. Okay. Because. He did, the Pacers did make the playoffs. Amazing comeback season from mm-hmm. his injury. And then Will Marcus. Okay. Aldridge, really yeah. solid for a team that won uh, almost 73 games. Yeah. We'll call it almost 73 a, games. A team that almost went undefeated at home. Okay. And then uh, this is where it gets weird because centers are at such a premium in this league. I, I'm going DeAndre. Going DeAndre, okay. I'm going to go DeAndre over Horford. Here. Okay. I think Carl Anthony Towns is on this list next year. And oh, I don't yeah. think that's a bad thing, considering how young he is. His team just needs to win a few more games, and mm-hmm. he just needs to build that name recognition. So the big uh, cat, the big cat, uh, Andre Scalaraga. Is that yeah. is that a who Carl Anthony Towns is now? I guess okay. the KAT makes it work. The big KAT. Yeah, I like it. Um, apparently, the T Wolves are looking at uh, both Tibbs and Scotty Brooks. Is that the best job that you think is uh, available or almost available? Because uh, New Jersey is open. Mm-hmm. Sacramento is open. Phoenix. Washington, that's not that bad of a I job. I think Sacramento has the potential to be a good job. I'd rather have Washington. I'd rather have John Wall and Bradley Beal to build off of. That'd mm-hmm. be a great th- place to start. I think I mean, that, I don't want Nene on my team. I but. think that Minnesota is far and away the best job. Okay. I really, cause, Is Kevin Garnett going to take it? <laughs> Could he actually control himself long I think enough he's, to coach? I think he's essentially going to be a, uh, the development coach for Carl Anthony Towns uh, and move into ownership and yeah. somehow do both uh, owner, have both an ownership role and a extremely one-on-one work role kind, with kind of a better version of Michael Jordan. Fan. Yes, <laughs> who can't really develop anyone because he can't stop thinking or talking about himself. Yes, or <laughs> challenging them to one-on-one <laughs> at the end of their workout or, <laughs> or whatever he does. <laughs> Bless you, MJ. I watched that Hall. I'm queuing that Hall of Fame speech up in my YouTube yeah. queue. Yeah. Are you just gonna put the track? You should put the crying Jordan face over Kobe in every YouTube clip. <laughs> <laughs> just have like it on a popsicle stick and watch the YouTube video moving it around. I am so sick of that meme. All right, we're gonna you wrap- and every other white person. We're gonna wrap up NBA with one more thing. 2017, 2018. It looks likely they're gonna add advertisements on jerseys. I believe we've covered this briefly on this show before. I'm staunchly against staunchly against it. Where do you stand? I th- Joaquin has no idea because he likes no, soccer so much. I'm mostly in the so what camp. Oh, because um, it starts as little patches on jerseys, but then it's going to be the team there, it, name's going to be not gone. Gonna, they, they're not going to take away the team name unless all of a sudden every team gets a crest. First they came for my shoulder patch. I think, and I said nothing. I think it was. I I hope they wind up putting the advertisement on the sleeve jersey. Okay. Just why not double whammy that horrendous the thing idea? Someone already hates. Yeah. I, my argument is that okay, it works in soccer because they don't have commercials and they have patches. They yeah. have the team crest. Yeah, but I just I never know who's playing when I see soccer teams, and it's really sad because I'm a casual observer of soccer, mm-hmm. so I have to watch, and then I see okay, Fly Emirates is playing against Fly Emirates Barclays. Oh, oh, who are the Barclays? You could easily see a Fly Emirates and a Fly Emirates. Could you? Could, you? Yeah, Milan and Paris Saint Germain and Arsenal all Fly Emirates. Oh man, um, <laughs> everybody flies Emirates apparently. Apparently, I mean the Arsenal Stadium's called the Emirates. Oh. <sighs> Goodness. Okay, well, you get five minutes. You've got four, four or five minutes to do your Champions League. I've seen some Ronaldo hitting three we, goals. We could do this together, Thomas. It doesn't have to be me doing it. But you got to start. <laughs> okay. Uh, first off, uh, Atletico Madrid knocked out Barcelona today. Wow. Yeah. Barcelona wow, came wow, in. Wow. They came in uh, having won the first leg 2-1 to one at home. Atletico Madrid took a 1-0 first half lead, making it 2-2 and having the tiebreaker on away goals and held out for the whole second half. I'm amazed. Are I mean, I, I know I can name players. Listen to this. Neymar. Yeah. Messi. Yeah. Suarez. There you go. The bitey guy. Yeah, the bitey one with, from Uruguay. I know why he bites so many people. His teeth are enormous. 
Yeah, and he has an overbite. He's yeah. just really trying to work it out. It's just he's he's champing at the bit because it's not chomping at the bit. I learned <laughs> I learned that recently. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, a lot of people are thinking that this this Barcelona team was going to be the first team to ever repeat in the as champions of Europe. They had something like 38 straight home uh, uh, non-losses, I guess you mm-hmm. call them in soccer, or a, 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 an undefeated streak. Undefeated streak. I suppose. Unbeaten. Unbeaten, that's what it is. It's yeah. different. When you, when you can tie, thing. it's different. Yes, yes. So. Uh, well, what else? Okay. Um, as you said, Ronaldo hit three at home against Wolfsburg. What on earth was that penalty or that free kick? It was a great free kick. How did it split two guys' hips? Well, the wall is supposed to stay square to the kicker, and not you're not supposed to try to turn and avoid the wall. That was the only gap in the entire wall, and it, it was a ball-sized gap, and it went through. They literally had one job. <laughs> you had one job to do. And they and didn't do it And it was not let Ronaldo score three times. Although I feel like even if that free kick hadn't worked out, he was probably going to get one. <laughs> you I think just, so? I, I felt it coming. You felt it was I'll, inevitable? Well, at 2-2, two, two, it would have gone to extra time. And mm-hmm. then he has another 30 minutes to get another one. Right. And there was no way to get counterattacks or any, any sort of offense. <laughs> Wolfsburg was lucky to score two at home. Hmm. And I didn't think they had it in the Bayern Pal. Well, are they called the Wolfies? What do, what do you call them the, casually? I don't... Wolfsburg. Okay. And I, they need a cool name. Because they, Barcelona, Barca, and like... They're from a city that was made so that Volkswagen could have a, like a, a factory so and we'll a headquarters. So we'll and call them the Smog. And they have the Volkswagen logo. They're the most artificially created team. Kind of like, I feel like that's the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> I feel like the Packers exist just to annoy other Midwestern teams. I feel like we should call Wolfsburg like the emissions test or something. Yeah. <laughs> Every game for them will just be the next emissions test. We'll see if they pass. <laughs> it's pretty good. See if they rig up the computers right. You've got Man City breaking through. Man Man City finally broke through. Uh, before this year, they had never sniffed the finals or the semifinals, and now they'll be in the semifinals. And uh, they have the potential to draw Bayern Munich, who is coached by Man City's coach of next year, Pep Guardiola. And I've heard no one wants to play Munich right now. No one wants to play Munich right now. Pep, they're, they're really good. Pep Guardiola finally achieved his dream of starting 11 midfield players. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh because I assume that's funny. He, yes. Well, he didn't. Uh, when he played for Barcelona, eventually he was starting both uh Mascherano and PK, and Mascherano is a midfielder turned defender. He use he always sends his uh, his forward or his back fullbacks. Forward, fullback yeah. forward. He sends them forward. And uh, at Bayern today, he started Philip Lahm and David Alaba, who are fullbacks. I believe he started them uh, as fullbacks slash holding midfielders. Didn't start any traditional forward or traditional defender. And because Neuer is a sweeper keeper, he's essentially also a midfielder. All right. So there you have it. Four teams left. Who you got? I'm going to go with Bayern. Okay. I think Bayern wins it. I'm going to go with Ronaldo. There you go. The Ronaldos. The Ronaldos. They're like the LeBrons. They're like the Cristianos. (laughs) The Cristianos. Um, okay, well, those are our picks. We'll have to form some sort of off-air bet. We'll go to our last sponsorship break. We mentioned that we like to drink and we like to know things. The place in Santa Cruz that values both of those things is 99 Bottles. They have an excellent drink selection, over 100 bottles and drafts, full bar, full slate of pub food, excellent atmosphere, located on Walnut Street between Pacific and Cedar, one of my favorite places to go to know things. You can also go there and play trivia Wednesday nights at 8. It's happening as we speak. So much going on in the Bay Area right now. 99 Bottles is where it's at. People are down there watching the Warriors game as we speak. One guy sitting in the corner in his Kobe jersey crying. That's my friend Mac. We won't talk about him more than we need to. 99 Bottles on Walnut between Pacific and Cedar. It is now time to bring back on our producer, Tori, for her segment, Tori Topics. Tori, you've been on the show so much already. you still have anything to say? Uh, Goran Dragic says, when we're 2-0, and oh, or we're 2-0 and oh when I lose a tooth. Okay. Did you see this clip? Did not. Mm-hmm. Dragic, Dragic had a tooth knocked out, and after passing the ball, picked the tooth up and threw it towards the heat bench. Threw it towards the bench? Yeah, he was on that side, on the sideline near the bench. Their basketball shorts don't have pockets, do they? No. That's weird. Is it? Every pair of basketball shorts I've ever owned has had pockets. I've never, I've never played in a pocketed. Well, pair the of announcers shorts. always say they picked his pocket. That's true. When they steal the ball. But I feel like that's more akin to thievery. Are you saying that we need like a tooth carrier pocket? <laughs> it's like a key pocket. 
You know how some shorts have like one really small pocket. On yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. A co- or like a little coin pocket. How's Maybe he that's gonna the get same his, thing. Like quarter from the tooth fairy. He's, well, he's going to keep it with him all game and then go home and put it under his pillow. I think the guy that knocks out the tooth should get to keep it. It should be some kind of, like, token. <laughs> a trophy. It's my quarter yeah. now. <laughs> but this, this also means he's he's had two teeth knocked out this year in service of the Miami Heat's three seed. What do NBA players get from the tooth fairy under their pillow? What, Thomas? I, it's not a joke. Oh, I thought, just, I thought this was... It, I did say I, it like I was setting up a joke. I, I thought we were in dad joke zone. No, no. Okay. I'd probably get a young lady sliding into their DMs or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tori. So here's how much it sucks to be a 76er. Uh-oh. Oh, I, no. You have to play with Nick Stauskas? Oh. Oh. Wasted Sacramento lottery pick. Uh, what I said when I listened to the, the previous, uh, the NBA playoff preview I did with Adam Johnson of D-League Digest, he came on and said, I'm a big Robert Covington fan. <laughs> and then called him the Rocco. The Rocco. <laughs> and I told him that he was in love with the Rocco. And we had a laugh. <laughs> And that's how that show goes when you're not here, Joaquin. Oh, I'm jealous. Okay. Tori, continue. Uh, so uh, TJ McConnell had just finished playing a game. Terribly. Uh, he had he seven assists he didn't deserve. Go on. Decided to go to a nearby establishment with his family. and with uh, the Applebee's? Is this like <laughs> a scene from Talaga Taken Nights? Oh, God. Uh, so he shows up at the door, and the worker says that there's a $10 cover. Uh for dinner? But you can get in free. No, it was like a bar or a cl- oh, okay. club or something. Uh, but you can get in free with a Sixers ticket stub. And it, his dad's like, he played. The hostess was like, not getting it. He's like, he literally played. But in he that had no game. pocket to keep his ticket <laughs> stub in. There you go. He still had to pay the cover. Uh, he That's can afford how it. much it sucks to be a 76er, though. They hit, they hit the salary floor this year. They paid their players, right? <laughs> you mean, it doesn't really matter. All they have to do is pay out whatever they would owe up to the floor to anyone he did. How much does Sam Hinkie have to pay for a beer in Philly? You know how they say guys like, oh, think, that guy will never pay for I a drink in two, Philly ever two again. Two second-round picks. <laughs> And a swap. He has to swap something, an maybe article of clothing maybe with, it's with one, the bartender. One second round pick and a clothing swap. <laughs> Is the pick conditional? It's still always conditional. It's the most I mean, conditional. It's the most conditional pick you could possibly have. If it doesn't fall in the first half of the second round, it yeah. must be conveyed the next year. Well, by the first half of the second round, I'm a little buzzed. Do you think so. it's a shoe swap? <laughs> Hopefully it's not a lady bartender. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, A's have to fly home on a plane with the Giants logo. Team you know, not amused. You know, good. <laughs> I'm glad. They are so poor. They have cheap skate owners, right? They are so cheap. Their stadium is so terrible. They should be begging to be playing in AT&T Park. Don't they play in one of the best baseball markets in the Bay Area? Why? Why? Or just in, in Cal- uh, Northern California. Here's the thing. Big on baseball. Yeah. Always but, has been. But it's 80-20 at this point. San Jose is owned, literally owned by the Giants. They were awarded San Jose by the commissioner's office as far as territory. When was that? Was that the 70s? I think it was the 90s. Okay. Um, The A's have tried to move to San Jose, but they can't move into the Giants' designated territory. So they've sued and lost every single time because... It it's legal. It's yeah. what they decided to do. They, it's collectively bargained. Are they going to be the Fremontes? That that was like ten. Oh, it was like ten, twelve years ago. They were trying to do that. Man, so good. I'm glad. I want to see some comeuppance for the A's. Well, when was it fifty fifty? Was it even like was it sixty forty A's the 80s? in the eighties? Was no, it sixty forty A's? Maybe Ricky Henderson, Jose Canseco, that great rotation. McGuire winning the eighty nine bridge series. Yep, yep, absolutely. And now it's just really plateaued from there. As San Francisco and San Jose have swollen as a market, the San Jose Giants are in you know San Jose, so that helps build a base. And the A's just don't have it. It's a money game now, and they've never had any. Do you think they stay in the Bay Area? Yes. Okay. Do you think they get a new stadium built in Oakland? They and the Raiders both need them, which is sad because they're not going to build a shared stadium again. Right. Are the Raiders going to stay? Yes. Because the Chargers are going to join the Rams, right? They're going to try. Okay. Okay. I have no idea. It's all so up in the air. What, where could the A's move if there were two? There's, two there's nowhere to go. Portland? Uh, Mont- Montreal? Montreal? That's right. honestly like the best landing spot for a team right now is Montreal. I think Portland could support a team. I don't think they so. they got the whole state of Oregon. 
They love they love the two teams they have. They don't they want their rent. Out. They don't want their rent to go up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, they sell out every Timbers game and every uh, Blazers game. Okay. Not I, that I'm saying I want the A's to move. I'm just saying I, just I think don't that's think a viable that's baseball option. Country. All right, Tori. Next topic. So I've got a joke for you. No, you don't. Uh oh. The Yankees are so old. How old are they? Their opening game, their opening day game was delayed for several minutes when Carlos Beltran kept yelling at the Houston outfielders to get off his lawn. What? Really? Yes. <laughs> Wait, were yes. they not supposed to be on the field? He just said, get off my lawn? Just kept yelling, get off my lawn. Okay. Not did, sure if it was... Did Teixeira then yell at a cloud? <laughs> Well, yells at A-Rod sipping a PBR in a rocking chair with a shotgun laid across his, his lap. And, yeah. a, and a good old dog next to him whose name he's forgotten. Is is A-Rod popular? Is A-Rod forgiven by Yankees fans now? Is he a true Yankee yet? No. no. He will never be a never. true Yankee. He's been forgiven by the rest of us because we're so bored in hating A-Rod. And it's been so entertaining that he's trying to be so nice now. Do they it was like Kobe still? five months ago. When he was trying to be nice to everyone again, because mm-hmm. it's his last, you know, his last hurrah. Like, what do you mean again? Well, he was nice out of high school. No, he wasn't. No, he seemed no. like a nice boy. No, no. 